You got want me to do that for you? Say my, my, my voice carries. Well, Cristo Anestri, I know I just massacred that grief, but Happy Easter to all of our Greek and Orthodox Christians out there as they are celebrating their Easter uh, this morning. I was watching a video of um, uh, somewhere in Greece and they were shooting off fireworks, I guess, at midnight. That's kind of neat. You know, I mean, we just wake up early. And they're just shooting off fireworks at midnight. I'm like, that's kind of a neat way to usher in Easter. So, happy Easter. So if you, if you come across the Orthodox Christians today, make sure you wish them a happy Easter. Uh, we do have a few announcements this morning. Uh, our studies are back in session. So Tuesday, our 12-15 study on the book of Acts. And then at night, Tuesday evening at 6, we are moving through the book of Ecclesiastes. And then at 8.45, here at the church in the parlor on Sundays, we are moving through uh, Reformed theology using Shirley Guthrie's book. Um, am I missing any other announcements? Do we have any other announcements? Yes, Alan. Last Sunday, we um, received the uh, annual One Great Hour of Sharing offering. Uh, when we get on the fellowship hour today, you'll see placemats, and they explain where that money goes. Uh, and uh, the placements are awfully interesting, and we really put those out on the tables. And for those who may not have been here last week or missed, I have more One Great Hour of Sharing envelope. If you want to get one from me during the passing of the piece, so you can put it in the offering plate um, this Sunday, uh, just grab one from me. Um, if you sponsored an Easter lily, um, please take it home with you after this service if you haven't already. And uh, I'll be at the script table of collecting uh, for the Easter lilies, and we still had five of them that were not sponsored. <clears throat> so if you'd like to uh, do that, we, that would be appreciated. It's uh, $8 per plant. Um, and then, speaking of script, uh, this is, we moved script order day to this Sunday, because uh, last Sunday was Easter, of course. I have the forms with me. Uh, I think Stephanie will be able to help me. Um, <clears throat> see her or I during fellowship hour to the place you script for. Thank you. Yes, and take your Easter lilies home because you can plant them and then when the plant dies just snip off the, the top piece and that bulb will produce an Easter lilies for you the next year. And you can have Easter lilies galore. So take them home and give them love. All right, any other announcements? Hearing none. Let us worship God. Peace. 
Yeah, I'm trying, but it's for the it's for the choir thing now. The choir, yeah, yeah, it's for the choir. Yeah, I don't think it's for you. No, see, right here. The choir thing now, but it's right there. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah, because I'm helping. <laughs> Sometimes you hear it pronounced logos, but really the Omicron is logos. And does anyone know what logos means in English? It means the word. 
word. Back about 500 years before Jesus was even born, there was a Greek philosopher named Heraclitus, and he wrote about this concept called the Lagos, saying that the universe is this wild place, and it's, it's in flux, and it's constantly in movement, and it's this Lagos, this concept that keeps it all from going bananas. And it kind of holds it all together. And today, we're going to hear from the first five verses in John's Gospel. And do you know what word in Greek John chose to represent Jesus? Lagos, exactly. If I had a stick, I'd give you a gold star. <laughs> so the Lagos, according to John, borrowing from the Greek philosophers, John is saying, yes, there is this concept of a word. There is this great concept that holds this universe together. And it's almost like John was saying, and the Greeks were that close to nailing it shut. And John says, there is a Lagos, and that Lagos is Jesus. And so according to John, he uses this Greek word, Lagos, to say that Jesus kind of is the glue that holds everything together. John says he was all the way in the beginning, and he is now, and he is with God, and he is God, and he is with us. He is the light that illuminates our world. And as the Greeks would say, he is the word, the substance, that holds this all together. So today you know, you know a new word, logos, Greek. And what does it mean? The word. Excellent. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we are thankful that you are known to your followers as the logos one that holds everything together. Be with us this morning as we celebrate you on the second Sunday of Easter. In Christ we pray. Amen. All right, our song this morning in our white songbook is number five and it is Hosanna. <laughs>
Forgive us our failure to have sympathy for others and offer help to those who are hurting. God, you are our living hope. Enable us to have a genuineness of faith so that we may witness to all who need the good news of your love. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our assurance of pardon. <clears throat> Here, the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. First reading is from uh, the Hebrew Scriptures in Genesis, first chapter, verses 1 and 2. Don't believe I'll find it in the songbook, though. This chapter in the Bible to find. Can't get to it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Our gospel reading comes to us from St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Listen for the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not too long ago, I was having a conversation with someone who asked me which of the four Gospels was my favorite. Now, this is not the first time I've been asked this question. And honestly, I enjoy all four of them. It depends on the mood of the day. You know, they have differing perspectives, different styles. But overall, my answer was the Gospel according to John for its unique writing style and its use of symbolic language and oodles of metaphors. While the other three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, seem to have a common source, from a common letter, John does not. It's kind of in a class by itself. The last of the four accepted Gospels, it is for the Jewish church as well as for the Gentile converts as well. It's a Gospel that continually plays on the symbolism of light and dark, that runs throughout the entire book. And today we're going to look at the first five verses. And if the Gospel of John is the doorway to the modern church, as that has been called, then the first five verses could be considered the front porch to open, to walk up. The author of John's Gospel begins his Gospel by setting a tone a tone that is unique and different from the other Gospels. It begins not with genealogies or with birth narratives, but with a string of metaphors, which, since its acceptance into the canon, 
has given the church a greater theological understanding <clears throat> on just who Jesus is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John's Gospel begins with a discussion about a certain word, little case W-O-R-D, the word to be exact, uppercase W-O-R-D. Now by calling Jesus the word, it speaks to both Jewish Christians and Gentile congregations as well. According to Hebrew traditions, the term word is used to represent God and God's decrees. For example, the word of God was given to Moses in the form of the law. To the Gentiles, Greeks, Romans, the word also spoke to their culture. Thinking back of our children's lesson five minutes ago. I hope your memory is that good. In 560 BC, Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher who lived in Ephesus, which is interesting because many think that the Gospel of John was written in Ephesus, describes a concept called the Lagos. He describes the Lagos as a force that controls everything that is in a state of flux or constant change. Now, this is not negative. I know in a church when you say flux and, and change, it's, oh, no, no, no. But this is not what he was talking about. Lagos in Greek translates to the word. According to Heraclitus, the Lagos is the principal reason that the universe is able to exist. He lived 500 years before Jesus of Nazareth is born. So, it is this word of the Lord to the Hebrews, or this word of Heraclitus to the Greeks, that spoke so powerfully to the early church. Now, if we transpose the word, word, with Jesus, the verse would sound like this. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. Makes sense. It is the only gospel that begins with the deity, with Jesus' deity, rather than his humanity. This small verse makes huge claims. One, Jesus was in the beginning, and he was with God in the beginning. He is eternal. Two, Jesus is God, because it shows the equality between God and Jesus. They are one. And being the last of the accepted Gospels to be written, it shows that the author is part of this Christian community that has ample time to understand the deity of Jesus Christ. We would say that the book has a high Christology, that they study Christ as, or they study Jesus as Christ. John's Gospel speaks to a community that understands that Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God. John does not beat around the bush. So instead of starting out with, you know, Christmas pageants, John says, Jesus is God. Are you ready for the rest of the story? Our section concludes with these words. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, according to John's Gospel, what 
has come into being with Jesus was life. And it is this life that becomes the light to all people. A light which shines in the darkness and a light like a, excuse me, and like a light, it cannot be overcome by darkness. Right? And we, we, we could see this in our own homes. You can have a, a blackout, right? Your lights go out, light a candle, it cuts right through the darkness. Darkness cannot, cannot hold back light. So as the world was living in darkness, the word, the logos, came to bring the light into the world, cutting through darkness, bringing a dark world life. In the beginning was the word, was the logos. As this beginning of the fourth gospel spoke to the first century Jews and Greeks and Gentiles alike, it speaks to us here in the 21st century. Just because many of you probably don't know who Heraclitus was, doesn't mean that his small little word doesn't have an ex extreme importance for us today. We live in a world that seems almost consumed with darkness at times. A world where we deal with hate and violence, a world where we deal with prejudice and ignorance. A world where we deal with injustice and greed. A world where we deal with war and destruction. And yet, even in this seemingly dark world, we are able to see the Lagos of God. We are able to see the word and the reason to it all. Yes, the darkness is something that we all deal with. <clears throat> but we do not walk through it aimlessly. We are not overtaken by it. We are not left orphaned, as Jesus told his followers. As the Hebrews knew it, God was there to guide them through the law and through God's prophets, to the darkness they were led. And as the Greeks knew it, God was there in the Lagos, bringing order to a seemingly chaotic world. There was something that held this world together, held it from bouncing and spinning out of control. And even though our world at times seems like a dark place, the light of Christ breaks through it. There is that guiding light that shines brightly within the dark so that we do not stumble in the darkness. Through Christ is life. A light leading in the darkness. In the beginning, was the Lagos. Amen. As Christ asks us, as he asked his followers, to bring their concerns, to open a dialogue with the one he re referred to as Abba, Father, that we should not go through life alone. So when we have issues, difficulties, concerns, we have someone who speaks on our behalf. So what would you like to lift up this morning in prayer to God? What would you like to share with one another and our Lord? Or perhaps what joys do you have that you would like to share with one another and offer up to God? What do you have? Yes, Colleen. I'm asking again for more prayers for Evelyn. We learned yesterday that she's going to have to have surgery. She's up to eight and a half pounds now, but 
she's still too little to put her under the anesthesia. They're taking her into Grand Rapids, and uh, they're going to do the surgery there, but they're probably going to do it next month. We've got to get more weight on her. But she has many hips, and um, the uh, cast and the uh, apparatus that they have to pull her hips in, it's not working. And she's so tiny and very, very worried. So the surgery will be on her hips? And it will be probably within a month? Sometime in May, as soon as they can get more weight on her so that it's safe to put her under. Got it. Thank you, Paul. Yes, Vera. Uh, prayers for my friend May, who has medical issues. Thank you. Yes, Mom. Um, prayer of thanks for the recovery of your Uncle Vinny. Patty. I'd like to have joyous praise for Harley. Uh, he does understand this grandma's not coming back and he's been praying every day and he's been going back to church. It's his grandmother you said? Yes. Yes, Alan. Um, Alejandro and Suhail called yesterday. Um, they had left Beirut and they were in Paris. They asked for travel mercies as they fly from Paris to the United States today. And they also asked for travel mercies for both their daughters, Aida and Yasmina, who were on their way from India to Thailand. Yes, Linda. A lot of the people in the, the bulletin for prayers are connected to us in one way or another. But you'll notice the name Gary Richardson and wife Bobby. Bobby has been his caregiver since October. So let us not forget the caregivers. And uh, Bobby, B O B. B O B B I. Let us go to prayer. Heavenly Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for so many things. We especially on this day thank you for the light that you have brought to this world. We thank you that John's gospel chose to use language 
that was applicable to both the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians who were now coming into the faith. This concept of the word representing God within humanity. Whether it be looking at the Hebrew tradition or whether looking at a Gentile concept of this Lagos that held everything together. What a perfect descriptor of you and your work. Not only do you hold this universe together, but you hold your church together. You hold this world together. Not by iron and sword, but by love and compassion, you bring your gospel into this world. You teach a new way, a different way, a way of peace and acceptance and love for all of your creation. Lord, we pray for our world, especially for those who live in war-torn regions. We pray for refugees who seek asylum and safety. We pray for those who live in fear. Lord, we lift up our nation. And we also pray for those who have no shelter. We pray for those who do not have homes. We pray for those who are called outcasts by society and have been pushed out into the margins. You teach us to be the champion of those who are marginalized, to reach out and to help people walk back with dignity because everyone is valued and loved by you. Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for those who create and, they, and enforce laws. We pray for our president. We pray for the courts. We pray for those men and women who create these laws and set them into action. May they be they be appropriate for all people living within our great land. Lord, we pray for those who live overseas, within our military, within the Peace Corps, within your mission field, allowing your presence to be felt when people are lonely because they are away from loved ones. Lord, we pray for our community here. We pray for those who struggle with depression or anxiety. We pray for those who are ill or coming out of surgery and recuperating, or perhaps getting ready to go in to have procedures done. Lord, when we say, hear our prayers, it is not an empty statement. And we say it because we know that they do not fall upon deaf ears. Whether we read aloud our prayers from pulpits, or lecterns, or pews, or say them in silence at our beds, we are comforted because you hear them. So we say, Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up Evelyn Rose, who is having to have surgery perhaps sometime next month in Grand Rapids on her hips, as what they have been doing up to this point is not really working. We just ask that uh, Evelyn gains, is able to gain more weight so that she is able to have this surgery that will uh, make some corrections to her hips so that she will grow and develop properly. We ask you to continually be with this little girl and her mother and father and, and her family. We lift up Vera's friend May, who, is, uh, who has medical issues. You know what those are. We ask you to be with May and be with her physicians and doctors as they are there caring for her. Uh, prayer of thanks for my uncle Vincent, who. Uh, is healing well from uh, the procedure he had on his brain as the swelling and bleeding has reduced. Um, he is doing much better. Uh, we are praying uh, prayers for joy for Harley as he is understanding that his grandmother is with God and that he is now attending a church regularly. Uh, that 
brings us great joy to hear something like that. We just ask that God continually works throughout his life and that he continues to grow uh, within your faith. Lord, we ask for traveling mercies for our own, for Alejandra and Suhail as they are uh, flying back from Paris to the States today. We ask that they arrive safely and then uh, from that location back to Indiana and bring them back safely to us and their community. But we also pray uh, for their children, for Mina and for Ida as they travel from India to Thailand uh, so they can have time together uh, to visit other cultures. <coughs> Lord, we lift up uh, Bob and Sue Lormer as they both have bad colds. We ask that they heal and they regain their strength. Lord, we lift up people like Bobby who cares for her husband, Gary, uh, who has been ill. And, um, and as Linda points out, uh, so, so little do we thank and point out the caregivers, those who are here to help us when we are ill. So we lift up people like Bobby, and we are grateful and thankful. We just ask that she is empowered to continually do the task in front of her to care uh, for Gary and that she be also given the opportunity um, to reset and to rest as she is, is make her able to care for herself uh, in the midst of caring for someone else. And Lord, we ask for safe travel for my parents as this Wednesday they fly and return back to Tampa Bay this Wednesday. It is wonderful to have them here uh, with my family. Lord, we thank you for so many things. We thank you that you came into this world not to judge us, but to bring us life. Not to allow us to live and stumble in darkness, but to illuminate our ways, shining your light, giving us an understanding of what it means to be a human being, what it means to love one's neighbors, what it means to care for the least of these. What it means to consider you friend, God, creator of the universe. As we close this prayer, let us use the words that you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have now come to the point within our worship service where we are able to give back a portion of which God has so generously given to us. Freely as you have been given, freely give.
thankful that you are a kind and generous God. Lord, we ask that you take this a portion which you have given to us in return to help edify your kingdom now and your kingdom yet to be revealed. In Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we prepare to sing our closing hymn for our worship service. Hymn number 115, Come, Ye Faithful, Raise the Spring. discussion in church today, but with our passage, we gain a new insight into a concept that has been for a long time, 500 years before the birth of Christ. This concept, this logos that holds everything together is finally understood by John in his gospel that he understood that there is this Lagos. There is this force that holds things together. There is this force that has been with us since the beginning and been with God, and that is God. That Lagos is Jesus Christ. So as John opens his gospel and begins, we are given a story about how this deity has come to be with us that God has chosen to dwell with us, to live with us, to bring light to our darkened world, to illuminate a path and show us the way to live with each other, to eternal life, and how to love our neighbors as ourselves. May the love of the Father, the peace of the Son, and the communion of the Holy Ghost go and be with you on this day and every day, and as always, go in peace. Mm -hmm.